Today, we are getting the latest batch of photos from the most powerful telescope ever made, the James Webb Telescope, the James Webb Space Telescope. These images let us look back 3 billion years ago, Thir meaning... 13. We, thank you. These images let us look back 13 billion years ago, meaning we can literally see our universe starting, as crazy as that sounds. Now this massive telescope is taking photos as it orbits the sun nearly a million miles from Earth, but... It's being controlled and operated right here in our region at the Space Telescope Science Institute in Baltimore. To tell us more about these images and what they mean and how local scientists are making it all happen, we turn to WTOP space reporter Greg Redfern. And this is, I mean, you've got to be on cloud nine. That's, I mean, galaxy nine. <laughs> hey, you know, when you've been waiting for a moment for 20 plus years, and that's just from the perspective of an reporter uh, amateur astronomer, a space outreach spokesperson, I'm telling you, it is epic, absolutely epic. And to be part of it for the last 10 plus years with WTOP covering it has been fantastic. Fantastic. It, Greg, it takes only a few scrolls on Twitter to see some of these amazing images um, from the cosmos. But let's start with how we got these in the first place. Tell us about the people in Baltimore who are operating the Webb Telescope and bringing these images to us today. It is such an amazing operation. I've been up there to the Space Telescope Science Institute several times, affectionately known as the TUT, T-U-T-E. <laughs> and there they have a team of people, roughly 30 on a shift of 12 hours, operating 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 and a quarter days a year uh -huh. to control James Webb Space Telescope, monitor James Webb Space Telescope, and to keep the telescope on its 10,000 hours of observing time schedule each year. And it is a well-organized uh, organization. Uh, it is amazing to watch them in action. I actually saw them in rehearsal uh, when they were waiting for the scope to come online. And now I've seen them in action. And I actually got a picture of myself mm -hmm. in mom's chair, which is the mission operations manager. And that doesn't happen very often. <laughs> <laughs> And it's not just those scientists up in Baltimore who really have their hands on this Webb telescope. Just down I-95 in Greenbelt, Maryland, scientists, scientists built parts of the Webb telescope at the NASA Goddard Space Flight Center. What role did they play down there? I'll tell you what, Luke and Megan, NASA Goddard Fl uh, Flight Center, Space Flight Center, was where Hubble's, or excuse me, gosh, Hubble. Hubble, yes, but <laughs> James Webb Space Telescope was actually built there at Goddard. And I watched it being built through the years. I have pictures going back showing the individual 18 hexagonal mirrors in their sci-fi looking containers. The secondary mirror in its sci-fi canister where they're being hmm. stored for years and years. Then when the telescope started being built, uh, you could see it begin to take shape. And the whole mantra the whole mantra behind the optical telescope element or OTE, the telescope was test, 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 and test again. We wanna break it here in the ground so it functions in space. And then they had to ship it from the Goddard to Texas for more testing in a cold environment at $200,000 a day, taking it down to less than a few degrees above absolute zero to make sure everything works. And oh, by the way, that was also the test chamber for the Apollo astronauts spacecraft. And oh, what a lineage there. And finally, ship it to Northrop Grumman in Redondo Beach to where it could be mated to the space craft element. So you've got a telescope that is riding on a spacecraft hmm. that is currently a million miles from Earth. And it had to travel 5,800 nautical miles through the Panama Canal to get from Redondo Beach to French Guiana for launching on Christmas Day. What an odyssey. What an wow. odyssey. Can I ask you a quick question? This is just for my knowledge. Who, who the heck is James Webb? Why is this called the James Webb Telescope? James Webb was the guy called by President John F. Kennedy 
to say, Jim, I want you to get us to the moon. And famously, he replied, Mr. President, I'm not a scientist or engineer. Jim, that's why I want you. And James Webb was the NASA administrator during the years of Apollo. And he okay. got us to the moon. So that's why the scope was named after him by a NASA administrator years ago. Okay. Mm. And so, you know, what we're talking about is this James Webb telescope and what it's bringing us just yesterday, we saw its first images. We saw the smattering of galaxies and stars. So Greg, tell us what that first image from yesterday really means to us here. Well, the most important thing, Luke and Megan, is it shows the telescope works and <laughs> it works <laughs> real well. But what that first photograph zeroed in on, and I love that President Biden got to release it through the White House. I thought that was great. But what it shows us is an area of space, and you're going to love this. It's called SMAX 0723, <laughs> which is the designator for this big cluster of galaxies. And these galaxies, there's a lot of them there. It's 4.6 billion light years from Earth, which means that the light that James Webb intercepted took 4.6 billion years to travel from there to the telescope. But what's amazing is this concentration of these galaxies gives us what we call a gravitational lens, which Dr. Einstein told us in his theory of relativity, that if you have a lot of mass concentrated in space, it can bend light. So what we have is this galactic cluster bending space-time to allow us to peer beyond the cluster to see galaxies that were being formed perhaps 500 million to 600 million years after the Big Bang. In other words, the early universe. And when people look at that image, Luke, Megan, they'll see these curved arcs. And it is these curved arcs that are space time reaching out to us only a half a billion years after the Big Bang. That's stupendous. And we've observed it with Hubble and now James Webb. And it is a quantum, quantum improvement. I'm getting goosebumps because you know what I did? I spent an hour looking at that image by zooming in and oh my goodness, the number of galaxies that we could see and the detail in those arcs. Oh, Ah, oh, goosebumps, goosebumps. But part of me Amazing. feels like people, people don't really know what they're looking at. Like they, they see stars, but there's obviously a lot of matter that one of the first photos I think that came out yesterday, it almost looked like confetti. I mean, with stars in it. Um, and then yeah. today there was a cool one where it almost looks like smoke or something, you know. It, can you describe one of the images to us and just tell us what we're seeing? What we saw yesterday was the first image, the early universe image, they call it. Today, we've got to see what James Webb is capable of doing with objects that are pretty familiar to us. The uh, five galaxies in collision, the Stefan's uh, Quintet, we've seen that multiple times, but the detail showing us what was happening with those galaxies and the surrounding dust and material. Hadn't really seen it that well before. Mm. And then the really beautiful nebulae, the smoke cloud, which are really gas and dust, the Carina Nebula, and then the what we call the Punitary Nebulae, which are places where stars, just like our sun, have ended their life. And we're seeing corpses, stellar corpses there. And guess what? That's what our solar system is going to look like in 5 billion years. So maybe the best for last, guys. <laughs> exoplanet, the exoplanet image, James Webb Space Telescope is so powerful that it is going to be able to analyze the atmospheres of 5,000 plus exoplanets. In other words, planets beyond our solar system that exist. And in this first image, the first time this chemical fingerprint finds water, Mm. in the atmosphere of this exoplanet. Can you imagine what James Webb, if it were someplace else with an alien running it, looked at Earth, they'd see cow flatulence, smog from Los <laughs> Angeles, water vapor. Oh, they got too much carbon dioxide. Oh, what's going on with that planet? And I think James Webb is going to be able to give us 
true strong evidence of planets where life as we know it life as we know it might be able to exist wow. so it's it's exciting mm. and it's really just starting here i mean we're in the first two days of these images coming and it's just gonna keep going am i right let me tell you something luke megan this was a direct quote when i was up at this too <laughs> it came from the nasa deputy administrator pam Melroy. she said Ariane 5, the launch vehicle on Christmas Day, did such a perfect job. We can now confirm that James Webb Space Telescope has 20 years of fuel on board. And that was the deciding factor. Five to 10 years would have been a pretty good nominal mission length, but we're now looking at 20 years. James Webb, 20 years. Hubble Space Telescope's been up there 30 years. The two are going to be operating together, hopefully for a few more years, because Hubble's getting old and coming down to deorbit at some point. But we'll have two complementary space telescopes. There's other ones that are going to be going up. But James Webb, I'm going to be putting a perspective piece up on WTOP later today, or actually we'll publish tomorrow. But I'm going to tell our listeners and readers about the perspective the age, uh, the, the epic, the epic of James Webb Space Telescope began yesterday. And it's a point in time people are going to want to remember.